brought you this story here that's pretty interesting. That is, a new study shows that fast food and candy advertisers are targeting black and brown folks more than whites. They do this through advertising on television shows that appeal specifically to African Americans and Latinos. Uh, check this windy spot, uh, which uh, features black teenagers identifying as targeted to them. Introducing Wendy's new Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. It's a Giant Junior? Yeah, it's the deliciously different Junior Bacon Cheeseburger made giant. With double the fresh, never frozen beef, double the oven baked bacon, and double the cheese, it's a Junior that's made a big name for itself. It's a Giant Junior. And now, for a limited time, get the Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger with fries, nuggets, and a drink for just five bucks. Folks, here's some of the key findings from this study done by the Yukon Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity. Black children and teens each viewed an average of more than 16 food-related ads per day in 2017, compared to 8.8 .8 ads per day for white children and 7.8 ads for white teens. Black children and teens saw approximately 2.5 times as many candy ads as white children and teens. I want to bring in my panel right now, and I want to start with you, Julian. And let's deal with this, this reality because we we saw this previously with black uh, media outlets when it came to the issue of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And many people said, oh my goodness, these tobacco companies, they're targeting African Americans. And growing up, if you looked at Ebony Magazine, if you looked at Essence, you looked at Black Enterprise, you saw these ads. But what folks don't also want to talk about is that the major car manufacturers, uh, the, the high-end manufacturers, and many other advertisers would not advertise in these various outlets. And so when you think about black media outlets, and I've look, this is I've worked in 12 now different outlets, the reality is when you think about fast food restaurants, companies with sh sh sugary uh, uh, products, they have been more inclined uh, to advertise and support various events in black media than, frankly, a lot of other advertisers. And so I think we have to look at this just beyond just the idea of saying, oh, they're targeting blacks and Latinos, to also understand the advertising culture yes. of who supports and who doesn't black media. Well, Roland, this is one of the reasons why we admire you so much for basically creating an alternative platform where you have the opportunity to choose, to pick and choose who advertises with you, understanding that this is all about predatory capitalism and basically extracting surplus value from people. We have an obesity problem in the African-American community. More than half of all African-American women, according to some of those standards, now according to one of them, I'm obese, which uh, I whatever, but, um, but some, based on those charts, more than half of us black women are obese. Our, there's an obesity problem among our children. And so to, to basically document the fact that someone is pushing four strips of bacon, two nasty hamburgers, a bunch of cheese, in bread, in white bread, it was white bread too. Uh, <laughs> just saying. Just, I mean, but they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're extracting surplus value. We have two issues. Number one, they're not putting a gun to anybody's head to say, you have to eat that hamburger. Uh, if you did, you'd go to the White House and be like, um, you know, Clemson or something. <laughs> uh, but number two, the issue is we have to really talk about those who do not advertise in our community and what our media outlets are stuck with in terms of who comes to them. No newspaper, no magazine, no BET or TV One is going to turn the advertising away because they need it, because that's how they survive. And so, again, kudos to you for what you do, but kudos to us, those people who are lifting up consciousness about the bad eating habits in our community and the extent to which they will kill us. Andre, I want to go to you because, again, I, I the study is critically important and it raises critical issues. But, again, as somebody who has worked in black media, oh, yes. I'm also understanding of when you have a media company, you got to have advertising dollars to survive. And if, and if other companies are ignoring black folks and these companies are targeting them, there's a reason black media companies, you will, you will talk, talk to those companies, because guess what? Others refuse to even advertise with us. If other companies advertise with black media, they wouldn't have to take Hello. as many ads. Absolutely. So, so there are a couple of things that are at play. One, um, media outlets and, and people in them harbor the same biases as, and stereotypes as 
uh, that exists nationally. And so there is a perception that blacks um, do want um, um, these kinds of foods, and it does influence our behavior. Likewise, there is a socioeconomic component to this. Um, black actors, black advertisers need business, and they're going to find it any way they can. And so when you see food deserts, in, or particularly in urban communities, and the only shop in town is McDonald's or Burger King and things like that, they're going to market um, as much as possible to, to, to make sure those products get out to those communities. But again, th this is a vicious cycle. You have advertisers who are racially biased, and it does influence behavior. Uh, Barbara. Yes, well, you know, racially predatory practices are just a problem that prevails within our community, within this society, and this is just one of them. I want to point out that there was a study, I don't know if people saw it, that came out, you know, in the last month that showed that more people are buying food from dollar stores yeah. mm, yeah, than, fr than the whole sales market for Whole Foods. That just tells because you... dollar stores are in our communities, and, Barbara, and, and, and the, uh, Whole Foods isn't. It's... Right, and it means also that, you, that if you're buying from dollar st uh, stores, there's no fruit, no fresh vegetables. That means, you know, certain levels of healthy eating is not available. I do think this is a challenge to our community that ultimately we have to start preaching, start teaching, start advocating for much more wholesome eating. And I, you know, I do that in my house. I mean, I listen, I have to talk to people in my own household. I'm like, SpaghettiOs? What is that? You know, come on, let's cook that? some real food. So, you know, you have to really work on this, and I think it's a real problem. These targeting, though, of African-American youth and our children, mm -hmm. because what you eat is what you think is what you, how you live, none of that makes sense. So it's urgent that we you know, not only engage these companies in changing what they're doing, uh, right. But also that we also look for other ways of organizing to make our communities more healthy. And that's why we want to, uh, again, expand the conversation. Uh, yes. First of all, th folks, thanks a lot. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. Martin.